Hi, in this video, we will take a look at how to extract local storage values using Google Tag Manager. In many web applications, local storage is actively used to store user values from the website. In some cases, you might need to extract some dynamic values from that storage to use in your tags. So let's dive in on how to do that. First of all, you can find what values you have in local storage by opening a developer console. You can do that by using a right click and selecting inspect. Then from the developer console, select application and go to the local storage section and select your domain name. You will see a list of key value pairs and under each key, there will be a certain value stored in the local storage. You can explore local storage on your own website and get some ideas on what data you could extract and use in your other tags. In this example, let's assume we are interested in number of items added to our shopping cart. So I will use this items in cart local storage item and extract it in Google Tag Manager. To do that, open Google Tag Manager and go to the variable section. Create a new custom variable and select variable type custom JavaScript. We will be extracting local storage value using a custom code since there is no default variable to do that at the moment. Now, from a video description, find the link to a GitHub page and you should see this file. Then copy example 1 as highlighted on this page into Google Tag Manager. What we are doing here is using a default object, local storage, and accessing an item with a given key name. This key name is just an example, you should replace it with your own key depending on what values you are trying to access. In my example, I wanted to extract number of items in a shopping cart, so I will use this key and replace that in our code snippet. Now you can name and save your variable. And we can test if it works using a preview mode. Once preview has been loaded, open Tag Assistant tab or window, click on the first event that you see, for example, window loaded, and navigate to the variable section. Here you should see your newly created variable and the exact value that we have extracted from local storage. You can now reference this variable in your other tags or triggers. You might also want to double check if this variable extracts correct value from local storage on the exact event when you will be sending this information to other tags. So let's say you want to send it when a certain button is clicked or when the page loads, you might want to click on a different events to see if this value is available. As sometimes local storage values are populated later when user interacts with the page, not on the initial page load, for example. You might have also noticed that there is also session storage, which also stores some values. You can also access those almost in the same way as we did with the local storage. So from the same GitHub link, you can copy example two and use it in exactly the same way as we used for the local storage. So you would replace key name with any key that you have in your session storage. Let's say I would want to extract this value. I would just copy that into my key name and we would extract value the same way as we did with the local storage. There might be more complex scenarios when local storage contains information that you need, but only is a part of a larger object. Usually those are stored in a JSON strings. Here is an example. So we have cart information stored in local storage and it contains nested data about uh, what products we have in our cart. So in this case, a yellow hat and a green t-shirt. And this is just a simple example, <clears throat> three, three, two, one. And this is just a simple example. It might be, it might contain much more information there. So let's click on this and check what we have here. You can see there are a lot of different uh, keys nested under this item. Then we have data and there's uh, more information here. So to extract and work with that kind of data, you would need to
So to extract, so to extract and work with that kind of data, you can use example three from the GitHub link provided in the description. So to work and extract that kind of data, you can use example three from the shared link. Let's take a look at this in more detail. Let's copy that and I will create another variable to show how this works. You can replace the key name the same way we did with the simple local storage variable. So what it will do, it will extract local storage item using a given key, same as in example one, but additionally, any structured information will be parsed from a text into a usable JavaScript object. And then we can reference any object keys to be used as our output. In my example, I had an object that had the key of products that contained multiple products there. So I can use that as a key of an object if I want to return all of the products. So let's do that. I'll replace this metadata with products. And let's see how it works. Again, open Tag Assistant, click on any of the events and go to variables. Now you should see a variable that we have just created. You can see now it returns not a string, but an array of items, and it should contain the same values that we had in our local storage, which were a yellow hat and green t-shirt product object. Now let's assume you want to extract specific product name based on this object. So how we could do that? Let's edit our variable once again. Now we are returning all of the products. We could return, for example, a single product from our object and then return its name. So basically we can work with that as a regular JavaScript object to access any of its properties. So let's save that. Again, in the preview mode, let's select variables. And now we can see cart items returns value of yellow hat, which is the same as we have for our first product under this first index and attribute name. So using a similar approach, you can extract any nested values that you have in your session or local storage. And that's it. I hope you found it useful and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See you next time.